Hey there, this is Ragnon, and this is my Holy Priest guide for raiding in patch 10.1.7. Uh, a lot of the things that I'm going to go over will still be applicable for Holy Priest in uh, the next patch, 10.2. Uh, um, but uh, I will be re remaking a guide. I'm planning to remake a guide when we actually get to that point. So let's dive right in. So first of all, oops. Uh, why would you want to uh, play Priest in Raid? Why would you not just pick a different healer? Um, priest is historically a great pick for Raid because um, having two heal specs, you are a very versatile choice, and uh, you chances are one of those two specs is in a good spot for tuning-wise um, and uh, a good choice for Raid. You also bring things like uh, the Powered Fortitude mandatory buff that everybody needs for Raid, uh, you bring Power Infusion, which is a strong tool to support your allies. Although it is getting nerfed a little bit in uh, the next patch, it's still going to be um, a strong pick and a nice addition to the group. Um, Holy Priest specifically, why would you want to play Holy? Uh, Holy is a throughput king. It's very strong and brings uh, a good healing profile when it comes to progression um, your mastery just kind of gives a nice buffer uh, when there's a lot of room for healing um, it maybe isn't quite the best for sniping heals per se because so much of your healing is tied into your mastery heal over time effect uh, which we'll get to um, but it does provide a lot of uh, just general raw hps throughput and um it also brings tools like uh, Symbol of Hope, which is a uh, effect that we'll talk about more when we get to our cooldowns, but it uh, reduces the cooldown of all raid members' um, defensive ability, um, and you also help the healers regain a percentage of their missing mana. Um, you also have Holy Word Salvation, which is one of the strongest healing cooldowns in the game on a 12 minute cooldown. It's not really 12 minutes because of cooldown reduction, but uh, very, very strong effect. We'll talk about that more when we get into our uh, rotation and our cooldowns and all that. Um, but it is a uh, strong pick with a lot of throughput and it falls into the throughput um, category of healers rather than the damage reduction category of healers. Let's go over our stat priority. So as a priest in raid, as a holy priest in raid, you want a lot of crit and mastery. So crit and mastery are your two go-tos. And that is a disadvantage of holy priest is that you have completely different gearing priorities for raid versus mythic plus, which is uh, a bummer. But, um, you know, as, as a tier goes on, you can definitely collect multiple uh, gear sets. Um, but unfortunately, it is different per um, content mode, game mode. Um, so crit and mastery are strong. Mastery is, uh, your mastery is Echo of Light. And so Echo of Light is actually going to be the majority of your healing breakdown. All of your direct healing spells, so pretty much all of your spells, um, outside of a couple exceptions like Renew, um, heal for an additional it's equivalent to your mastery so mine's an additional 39 percent over six seconds that means every single one of your heals um is going to after you heal for example i'll, I'll heal myself with a holy word serenity right now and you can see i have my mastery ticking every three seconds i'm getting healed for an additional twenty-one thousand, which is the 39 percent of what the heal did to me um, and we'll talk more about how the mastery interacts later when we get to that section of the video Critical Strike uh, increases uh, the effectiveness of your spells when, when a spell crits. Let's see if I can fish one out real quick. Uh, I'm not even seeing numbers, so that's not going to help us. But um, crit, uh, it, you know, it, it, it increases the effectiveness of your heals. And in a raid setting, um, that's very helpful because when you're, you know, trying to push up health bars and stuff like that, if you can get extra effectiveness, um, then that's great. Uh, haste is a very low priority. It's your lowest priority, actually. The less, the better in raid, um, because the more haste you have, the faster you'll run out of mana. So in raid, especially if you're used to mythic plusing, it's going to feel very, very slow. But your heals are going to hit a whole lot harder. And because you have mastery, um, you know when you do a, a spell, when you when you heal, for example, with a serenity or a sanctify, excuse me, your AOE heal. 
um, it will do the initial heal, and then you have the mastery ticking afterwards. So, um, kind of a, a heal over time healer in that regard. Versatility is uh, underneath crit and mastery, th those being equal. Um, versatility can just be nice to help you survive, but it's not really a priority. Um, Leech is worth mentioning. Leech is one of our best stats, actually, um, and it's one of our best defensive stats. Um, so Leech is extremely strong for healers, especially in a raiding environment, because all of the healing that you do, you're healed for a percentage of that. So right now I'm at 15% Leech. That means that any healing that I do, I am receiving 15% of that healing. So on a fight like Sarkrath or something like that, um, where there's a lot of damage coming out, that helps your survivability a lot. And it actually sometimes is like my fourth best heal. Um, so Leech is very, very good. And as much as you can, um, you do want to prioritize uh, getting Leech as long as it's not too much of a dip in item level. Um, and uh, on questionably Epic Live, which I have a video about how to use that to sim your healer, um, a lot of times actually it's it wins out on, on some items that maybe have some pretty bad stats like a bunch of haste and stuff it, it still wins out so leech is very uh worth prioritizing uh let's look at the rest of our guild or our, our gear excuse me um so for uh embellishment items that you want to craft uh spore cloak is very strong in a progression rating environment um it will provide a shield when you drop below 30 percent health and then when you're above 70% health, you get a passive heal every five seconds. So very strong effect, uh, and you'll find it saves your life a lot. So I love Spore Cloak. It is, unfortunately, we got news that it's getting nerfed in next tier, but I still think it's going to be pretty strong. Um, the shield is, I think, getting halved, and instead they're adding a versatility bonus when you're above the 70% health. Um, I still think it's going to be a strong craft, so that is good. Uh, another good craft is if you have a lot of sockets, uh, socket slots, I believe once you hit around five or so, um, Lariat becomes worthwhile again. And so, uh, your Lariat can be a strong craft outside of that. There's really not a whole lot of, um, strong crafts for healers. Um, healing darts is probably one of the other better options, but I've gotten rid of that in favor of Lariat. Um, so that's uh that's embellishments and then trinkets you obviously want to get rashok's molten heart that is the number one healer trinket by uh, a large margin so that drops from rashok in the raid and uh, you want to get your hands on that as as quickly as you can and even if it's like an lfr or a normal trinket um, it's going to be your best option in that slot and then other options for your secondary slot um, is uh, OCD, the Ominous Chromatic Essence. You can use that to get a nice buff. I set mine on crit because that doubles for being a good choice in uh, in Mythic Plus. Whereas, you know, if I chose Mastery, Mastery is not good for Mythic Plus. If I chose Haste, Haste isn't good for Raid, but it is for Mythic Plus, and so on. So crit's good for both, so I, I just set mine on crit. It's also good for, uh, for Disc. Um, another choice would be um, I, I'm running the uh, mythic uh, the class trinket here from Echo of Neltharion. That is also a good choice. Um, Holy has a lot of um, you know continuous healing. It's not like Disc where all of your healing is relegated to a couple you know windows on a cooldown. Um, so this buff that it gives you periodically grants you um, extra intellect. Um, and so you'll get good value out of that. It sims highest for me, so I've I'm, I've swapped to using that. Um, you could run Ward, um, but that's more of a Mythic Plus uh, trinket. The shield that it gives is not really worth um, what you lose in uh, some of these other trinket options. As far as Mythic Plus options for trinkets, they're all really quite bad. Water Beating Heart is from Halls of Infusion, and it's pretty terrible. Um, the one from, uh, Vortex Pinnacle, Rain Song, I think it's called, is, is a haste trinket. That's also not good for Holy and Raid. Um, Iridius is probably, uh, one of your best options because it's on a three minute cooldown. So you could pair that with either Salve or Divine Him, um, for the extra intellect. That's probably the one that I would choose if you weren't, 
uh, able to get one from raid and you were looking to farm something to fill that slot. All right, so that is our um, trinkets. Uh, let's go over the class tree here. So uh, in our class tree side of things, it stays fairly stationary. Um, you Some notable things, you do want to make sure that you're getting Rhapsody. Rhapsody was recently uh, buffed and it is a very strong addition to our healing kit. So you wanna make sure you get that. Um, I leave mine on improved mass dispel just because in case I'm the only dispeller on uh, on forgotten experiments or something like that I just kind of leave it there um, the notable choices are down here so angels mercy was nerfed as of 10.1.7 it used to get reduced by the damage that you took but now it's just a flat 20 seconds so it's actually not nearly as good because on certain fights you were taking damage very consistently and you could get that pretty low um, but it's probably still a better choice than binding heals. Really, you could go either way. Um, binding heals makes it so that your 20% of your heal, which you'll never ideally cast, or flash heal will also heal you. So um, you're not casting a whole lot of flash heals, but when you are using your infusion procs, it will make it so that you receive your protective light buff here to reduce the damage that you take by 10%. So that could be good. I'm just choosing to leave um, Desperate Prayer um, cooldown reduction on um, so but you could choose either way um, down here this choice node you could choose either between benevolence or power word life I have chosen to go with benevolence because it increases the healing of all of your spells by 3% and in a raiding environment uh, especially this latent tier you are oftentimes fighting with other healers for sniping out heals and stuff like that and uh, many times a target that you would use power word life on uh, by the time you have the reaction speed to actually push it, unless you are, you know, prepared and advanced mentally, um, it could get sniped by another healer because, you know, it, they have to be below 35% health. So if they get some kind of hot or something on them and they get, go up to 36% health, it, this heal is nearly worthless. So um, I like the um, consistency of benevolence and especially now that we're not progression rating anymore. Divine Star and Halo are a strong, that's a strong choice node. Either of these work pretty well and they have their use cases. Divine Star is going to be more continual throughput. It's on a much shorter cooldown and it works best when the raid is stacked up and you can shoot it directly through the raid. So think fights like Magmarax where everybody's stacking the pools or uh, Rashok where everybody's stacking in the soak. Um, Sarkareth P1 for Mythic and stuff like that where you got a clean shot through the ranged and the melee. Um, those are all good choices for Divine Star. Whereas Halo is good for burst damage events where the raid is spread out. Um, think like Ziskarn, the blast wave, it knocks everybody back. The raid's already spread out because of the embers and stuff like that. So Halo is good for providing a large amount of healing on a, a, a long cooldown, 40 seconds, um, but it's a nice burst healing and you're gonna get a whole lot more value when the raid is spread out. So um, you can swap between those. Those are both good choices. I typically tend to sit on Divine Star because uh, I like the option to have an additional uh, instant cast. It's pretty nice for that. And then your two options down here, you can either path this way and get Improved Fade and get Essence Devour, which provides a pretty pathetic amount of healing from your Shadow Fiend, but it's better than the healing uh, from Angelic Bulwark. So Angelic Bulwark is more for progression rating and it'll give you a, a shield once you drop below 30% um, health, but it's, it's a pretty pathetic shield and it's on a minute and a half cooldown, so it's not really great. Um, so I, I see the majority of builds on Lorgs dot or uh, excuse me sub creation running Essence Devour. So um, just probably because it's the one that pr increases your HPS. Let's look at the uh, spec side of things, the spec tree. Um, so most of these talents are pretty set in stone. There are two builds that I would. Uh, recommend bouncing between and see which one you like better They're, they both play very similarly but they do have different things that you have to prioritize uh with your attention so there is the epiphany build i would recommend this build as your go-to for most fights it interacts the best with our tier set 
Um, so notably, it goes down here into Epiphany. So Epiphany makes it so that your holy words have a 25% chance to reset the cooldown of your Prayer of Mending, which is your most important healing ability. Um, so that's really nice. That means that you can fish for resets. So if you cast, uh, for example, if you cast a Prayer of Mending and then you cast a Holy Word, I didn't reset there, but I could, there we go, that one did. So you could reset it. So what you do is you use Prayer of Mending and then try to pair that with a Holy Word right after it. And that will maybe get you a chance to throw out another Prayer of Mending, which ties into Answered Prayers, which we'll get more into into the... Uh, rotation section and everything but that's a very 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 important part of our kit um so that's that's pretty nice um the other build option is the light of the naru build so light of the naru changes out um epiphany and instead light of the naru makes it so that your holy words are reduced the cooldown reduction is reduced by an additional 20 percent so we're, we haven't gotten to the um, rotation side of the video yet, but just know that your holy words, cooldown reduction and everything is very, very important for holy priest. And so having this additional cooldown reduction helps tremendously with reducing the cooldown on your biggest cooldown, holy word salvation. So um, I only really run this when um, I'm trying to get three salves on like mythic um, Echo of Neltharion. Um, but even that, I I run with another holy priest, and so I've actually uh, moved away from doing that. I've just kind of settled on the fact that I'm probably only going to get two good casts because um, she's running this, and uh, you know we'd have to use our salves at like the same time to f even fit with the three salves in. So um, this can also just be a nice option if you're feeling lazy, you don't want to pay attention to it resets on your palm and you just want it to always be the same, um, this can be nice as well. So the difference between these as far as play style is if you are running Epiphany, you have to keep more of an eye on your resets on Prayer of Mending, watching that because every time you use a holy word to heal, you might have that come off cooldown and it's very important that you push palm right away. Whereas Light of the Naru, you're going to have much more frequent holy words. And so you're going to have to pay attention to that because you're probably going to be sitting on two charges uh, more often. So you have to make sure that you're paying attention so that you don't do that. Because um, sitting on two charges is a big waste. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to Epiphany here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the um, Mastery and Healing Breakdown. So I have a log here from our Rashok kill this week. Or no, this is uh, this is last week. Um, I don't remember why I liked this one more. I think the parse was higher. <laughs> so um, we're gonna go over this one. So um, if you look at my healing breakdown here, across the fight, you can see Echo of Light. That's my mastery. Um, it is far and above higher than any other heal that we do. And that's because Every heal that we do, except for like Renew, um, feeds into this Echo of Light. So, you know, if I'm throwing down a Sanctify on people, it's triggering Mastery. And if I'm all my Prayer of Mending bounces, it's feeding into Mastery Healing. Um, Divine Star, Holy Nova, like all of that. It's all just feeding into this one healing ability. And so you can see it overheals by quite a bit because it's not really controllable. It's just when you heal, you get to heal for an additional amount uh, equal to your mastery over time. Um, and if you're curious about how exactly the mastery works, there is a very good website that I like. It is called The Mechanical Priest. Let me find it here. I will link that in the um, description. Um, but Mechanical Priest, it goes over uh, everything that you could possibly nerd out about a about, uh, priest, holy priest. So um, if you want to know exactly how that works, if you want to know how your divine image works and all that, um, it has a very detailed uh, description of all of those here. So if you're a nerd like me, uh, head there and, and go wild. It's a lot of fun. So, um, And then underneath Echo of Light, my next highest is Prayer of Mending. Prayer of Mending is a very big part of our kit. Um, and so it, it bouncing around, it's a very efficient spell. You can see it only has 9% overhealing. We'll talk about why it only has 9% overhealing and why it's such an impactful spell uh, when we get to our rotation. 
And then Sanctify is also a high healing because the upfront healing that it does is very strong. Depending on the fight and depending on how you are playing, Prayer of Healing can be up there. It can be a little bit higher. Um, I think in this particular kill, I was mostly using Prayer of Mending for the cooldown reduction, and I didn't really get, um, despite having a good amount of casts, yeah, it was my number one cast, um, I, I, it does not heal for very much. So that'll... We'll talk more about that in the next section. Okay, so that is how your healing breakdown will typically look. Your mastery is a huge, huge, huge part of your uh, breakdown. Okay, let's take a look at this graphic. So I spent some time making this graphic. I hope this is something that you can look back at and is helpful. Um, but this is our rotation in a nutshell. So. Holy Priest is all about cooldown reduction, and I've kind of split it into three rows uh, based on its um, cooldown, essentially. So I actually want to start in the middle here um, with your, I'm going to call these your workhorse spells, your, your holy words. Um, these are um, going to provide a lot of your healing, um, and they are very important to be pushing. This is where the majority of your attention is going to be um, placed. So, uh, looking at um, Serenity, because it's going to be a little easier. Um, Serenity is not super important in Raid. Um, really, when I'm when I'm doing, uh, I'm just looking for I'm just looking for people that have low health that um, could use a big nuke of single target healing. So a lot of times that's a uh, you know a tank or or a squishy uh, you know hunter or something like that after a big raid hit. Um, so whenever you can, you want to prioritize people that have low health so that you don't overheal. But I also use this as something to trigger my um, light, uh, my divine image um, when I am running low on my sanctified charges or I want to save these for a specific moment. So um, this is just your you know single target. Oh crap! I gotta heal him, save him. Uh, button. Um, your sanctify is uh, your primary heal that you want to use after a damage event hits and stuff like that and the whole raid is damaged or a group of people or something like that and you want to cast it so that it hits six targets. It has been nerfed to five targets in 10.2 but um, you want to use it on either the melee stack or the range stack or you know, ideally both if you're fully stacked, like for example, like a Rashok um, soak. Um, but this is a smart heal. And so it will prioritize lower health targets and it, you'll get good value out of this. So the overhealing on this typically should be fairly low unless you're just primarily using it uh, for cooldown reduction and it's not a high healing fight and you're, you know, you're just trying to avoid overcapping on charges on this. Um, but this should be your go to. Um, I'm actually going to now move up here to salve. Salve is our big, our big boy, our big cooldown. So um, salve is a very, very important uh, cooldown. We want to aim to have two to three casts per fight. It depends on the length of the fight. Something like a Rashok or, or a, uh, excuse me, uh, Razagath or an Echo of Deltharian or something that's quite long. Um, you can get three, but uh, I put a little asterisk here. Uh, the huge majority of fights are going to be two. It is so much better to have two strong casts during high damage events than it is to have three crappy casts. So um, you, if you can get three high value casts, that's awesome. Um, but typically it's going to be two. And so uh, it is a 12 minute cooldown, but with all of the cooldown reduction that's feeding into it, um, you can get it down to you know between three and four or uh, if you're really lucky with your procs and stuff like that, maybe lower. Um, but uh, three to four is probably a good benchmark for how long you can typically expect. Um, let's look at our um, low or no cooldown spells down here. So these are the ones that you're going to be casting the most frequently, and these each feed into one of your two holy words. So your single target uh, holy words uh, your Prayer of Mending, I put a little crown over it because this is your number one priority spell. You should fall in love with the spell as a Holy Priest. Um, I This is one of my favorite abilities in the game, and I get some sick satisfaction watching it jump around the unit frames and stuff, um, which is one of the reasons I love Holy Priest so much. 
Um, so what Prayer of Mending does is when you cast it on target, it will put this buff on them and it has seven stacks by default um, after you have a talent that increases the amount of stacks it has. And what it does is when that target takes damage, uh, then they'll receive the heal to uh, counteract that damage. So in this case with my stats and stuff, it's 11,000. Um, and then it will jump to a, another ally. And I forget exactly the range on it um, uh, with 30 yards. So it's not the full 40, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so if I take the damage, it's going to hop to somebody else and it will now have six stacks uh, remaining. And then if they take damage, it'll jump to somebody else. So you can imagine something that has constant ticking damage. Um, you're getting very, very good value from it because, you know, one person takes the damage, it jumps to somebody else. And then the, the next tick of damage happens, it jumps to somebody else. And um, if it hits another person that already has a stack of Prayer of Mending, what it'll do is it will stack. So let's say that one person has three stacks remaining on a Prayer of Mending and somebody else uh, just uh, had a, a seven stack jump over, then the six will be added and now that person will have a nine stack. It only stacks to 14 though, um, so uh, if I had a 14 stack and for some reason it bounced, another one bounced to me, the excess would unfortunately be lost. Um, but there's so many people in a raiding environment, uh, typically that does not happen. So um, Prayer of Mending is a very efficient heal and it provides cooldown reduction into our uh, Serenity. So. Um, it's it's one of our most important heals and it also whenever it bounces there are a bunch of other interactions that prayer of mending has um one of them is benediction um so anytime it bounces it has a chance to leave a renew on the target that it heals um which is very strong especially looking forward to next season with our tier set um this is going to interact very very strongly with that and that's going to be a big uh, source of our um of our procs from our tier set um and also things like uh it heals more for each bounce remaining so high stack prayer of mendings are going to heal for four percent more per each of the stacks um so that's that's a strong interaction as well um and when you provide the healing it leaves mastery on that target it leaves your echo healing um Flash of Light is really just going to be a triage heal when somebody is is going to die unless you do something and you don't have a Serenity ready, uh, you use this to prevent death. If there's low, uh, you know, if, there, if there's low healing moments and stuff like that, and I've already got two s charges of my uh, Serenity and you know, and, and we're about to go into a high damage uh, moment of the fight or something like that. And I'm not really worried about dealing damage. Um, I might spam this a little bit to uh, prep another charge of Serenity so that I have that. Um, so, and then the main way you're going to be using this is with your infusion procs. So the procs that you get um, that allows you to uh, use it for free and use it instantly. So that's going to be the majority of how you use those. Uh, let's look at the AoE side of things. This is your big focus in raid, other than Prayer of Mending. Um, Prayer of Mending should be your number one heal because it's very efficient. Um, it bounces around. Um, you don't have to wait for damage. Just when this is off cooldown, throw it somewhere. Um, you could throw it on a tank because then you're going to be guaranteed getting a bounce. You could throw it on somebody whose stack is about to expire or whatever. Just get it on cooldown. Um, so looking at this side of things, the AoE side of things, um, Circle of Healing is a very efficient and uh, effective heal. Um, it doesn't heal for a whole lot. You're really not going to see it push up health bars like crazy, but it is a smart heal, so it's only going to be healing injured targets. Um, it's not very high mana cost. It's instant cast. It's on a fairly short cooldown, so you want to be using this um pretty much on cooldown on honestly i use it on cooldown um if i'm if i'm being 100 percent honest um but you could save it for like a second or two if you know a damage event is coming up and you need to start spamming some uh prayer of healings but i just honestly use it on cooldown because chances are there's some damage somewhere that it can sneak its way into healing um 
next is prayer of healing prayer of healing is a pretty pathetic spell honestly it's not it hasn't been strong in a long time um but it does it that's not to say that it's not worth using so prayer of healing what it does is it will heal actually i have it on a macro so i've got to pull it up this way um it heals the target and the four nearest allies uh for a certain amount so unfortunately it's not a smart heal so that will mean that let's say that you use it on the tank and he's surrounded by melee um, and there's some ranged targets that are just a little bit behind the melee and they're really really damaged the melee is completely full health those ranged players are never going to see any of this healing it's going to get sucked up by the four nearest allies so it's best used if you're using it for healing it's best used when the whole raid is taken damage and you're going to pretty well get effective healing from it no matter who it heals so when i'm using prayer of healing typically i'm moving my mouse around and i'm just kind of randomly picking people you could prioritize like you know melee for a couple uh casts range for a couple casts but if you're spreading it around chances are you're going to get um pretty decent value so um the big reason that prayer of healing is so good is because with your circle of healing we're running a talent called prayer circle and prayer circle makes it so that when you use circle of healing your cost and your cast time of prayer of healing is reduced by 20 percent. so that makes it so that suddenly prayer of healing which is typically a pretty expensive spell becomes pretty cheap and you can spam it i think it's i can fit like five casts or so um in so one two three four yeah about five about five casts of prayer of uh healing um during that prayer circle uh buff and so that allows you to cast it for pretty cheap and the big reason that that's important is because that provides cooldown reduction for your um sanctify which is your your big focus for raid healing um this is um where the majority of uh your mastery healing and stuff might come from um and so both circle of healing and prayer of healing do provide that cooldown reduction um so you use them together during damage moments or you know in between damage moments to make sure that you have at least one certain uh, sanctify i keep getting these mixed up one sanctify cast for when a damage moment hits the reason that you want to use a holy word when a, a damage event happens and you're going to have to do a bunch of healing is because that is the trigger to bring out your divine image that's little this little naru dude um so that uh i'm going to come back to him in just a second because uh, that's a that's a pretty important part of your healing as well um but you want to make sure that he is out um, by casting a holy word before you start healing. Otherwise, he's going to do nothing and he's going to be a worth, worthless talent. So um, make sure that you prep healing events with a holy word. Uh, let's finish off the other points on this uh, chart. So again, Salve, uh, you want to use this about two times per fight uh, in effective healing moments. And then if I move my head out of the way here, you can see... We got Divine Him right here. Divine Him is your other heal cooldown. And unfortunately, you do have to stay stationary. You channel it. Um, it will provide healing to all raid members within 40 yards um, over 7.3 seconds. Um, it's not a huge amount of healing, but it does trigger mastery. And then also it increases. The big thing is it increases their healing taken by 4% per tick so by the time it's all said and done i think it's a 20 percent healing amp for everybody um and so yes you do have to stay stand still for that channel duration but um the solution for working around that if it's a dangerous moment and you're worried about being in a swirly or something um you can either get a spatial paradox from an augment evoker augmentation evoker and that makes it so that you can move while you're channeling spells so that's a very very strong um interaction and it's a high priority spell to receive spatial paradox so if you have an augment friend or something like that or you call out in comms or something um you can pair those together to great effect uh or before augmentation evoker another thing that you could do is you could if you have a protection paladin you could call for um, spell warding and that allows you to stand in junk um while you're 
uh, channeling that. So this is what it looks like. You're channeling it. I'm receiving this buff here. So my healing is increased by 12%, 16%. And by the time I get the fifth stack, it is 20%. And that lasts for a good amount of time. And uh, that in increases the healing, not just from you, but all other healers. So it uh, pairs well with a lot of other healing cooldowns because um, it increases the effect of their stuff too. So um, over here on this side, Symbol of Hope is a very strong ability because defensives are are strong when you consider the whole raid is using their damage reduction. Um, that's, you know, like a 30, 40% damage reduction across the whole raid. Um, and what this does is it allows you to reset 60 seconds of the cooldown on that. It has been nerfed as of now in uh, the next patch down to 40 seconds, but I th it's still going to be pretty good. Um, usually there's usually it's not just 40 seconds between the damage event usually there's a buffer as well and uh and so the 40 seconds should still be fine but that's a very strong way to make sure everybody has their cooldowns up but for next uh damage event if you're in like a pug scenario or something they might not even notice they might not uh be paying attention uh maybe they didn't even push their defensives in the first place um but in a coordinated raiding group scenario um you can use this to uh to make sure that the raid has their defensives for two different um, damage events within a short period of time. Um, looking over here, if you are running the Epiphany build, then uh, Chastise becomes a very strong tool. Uh, it's another holy word, so it does uh, summon your divine image. Um, but the big way that I use this is right after I cast Prayer of Bending, I try to, if I have Chastise, I cast it right away um, to try to fish for a reset. So. Um, that's the primary use for Chastise. It is also a pretty high damage ability. Um, so if you're focused on like damage parsing and stuff, it can be a strong addition to that. Um, down here at the bottom, I've got Divine Star and I should have included, um, I should have included Halo as well. I forgot to include that. Uh, I'll edit the graphic. Um, but uh, these two abilities should be used pretty much on cooldown. Um, but, uh, if you can hold it for a couple seconds to make it line up with the damage event, then you should. Um, so Rhapsody will stack up its charges over 20 seconds, so it'll get its full stack at 20 seconds. So if you can hit damage events um, and heal the raid with that, it's a very strong healing addition. If you can't, if it, if it comes up and there's nothing for a while, you can just push it um, and it will trigger its master healing and stuff like that. So uh, it'll add damage on the boss. Um, so don't sit on it for too long. And then again, Divine Star, we talked about it earlier. You want to aim it so it hits the most amount of people possible. So you're really stacking up that mastery bonus from it. Divine Star itself doesn't heal for a whole lot, but boy, it provides a whole lot of uh, mastery healing. Let's see if it actually shows here. So um, healing. So you can see Divine Star here. Um, yeah, actually the ability itself did a lot of healing. It's not even counting into, not even counting into the uh, mastery. Um, it uh, was my, you know, sixth highest heal. 51% um, overhealing is bonkers. Um, so if it was actually being used to heal damage every single cast, it would be uh, an incredible amount of healing. So it does a lot of overhealing. Uh, so sorry I misspoke earlier on that. Um, I believe that will do it for this graphic. I do have a general priority list up here in the corner. You can check back um, for just some cheat sheet notes and stuff. Um, let's talk about the divine image. So divine image, I went over this in my holy in my holy priest mythic plus video, um, but I'm gonna go over some of the key points again. Um, when you use a holy word, it does summon your divine image, and the divine image has um, spells that it casts that are tied with some of the abilities that you cast. So if I look at my log here, you can see that your divine image, its abilities were broken into three healing events. Um, so Dazzling Lights, I believe that's cast whenever you use your like Sanctify or your uh, Prayer of Healing. I don't remember what the names on which one's which, but you can check that on the Mechanical Priest. But in short, when you use your ability while it's up, it, you're going to be providing extra healing um, from his abilities. So 
you want to make sure that you prep with a holy word. Um, usually that's going to be a sanctify. So the whole raid just took damage. I heal with the sanctify. And then I use circle of healing and we start, you know, prayer of healing spamming or something like that. Um, he's going to be adding his abilities with all of those prayer of healings. So um, that's about all I have to say about him. The divine image for, for raid. Uh, just prioritize making sure that you have him out when the damage actually needs to be healed. Uh, apotheosis. So this is a big, big part of our cooldown reduction. So we have a talent here called Answered Prayers. And that makes it so that when your prayer of mending heals 50 times, you gain apotheosis. So this is one of the big reasons why prayer of healing, prayer of mending is so important to be used on cooldown. Um, when it bounces those 50 times, you will have apotheosis, which if you're not familiar with that spell effect, what it will do is it gives you um, a mana reduction cost on your holy words, and it also makes it so they recharge a lot faster. So um, if I'll simulate that here by using a, an apotheosis. So uh, I'll go ahead and use a serenity, a sanctify charge. So if I pop apotheosis, it doesn't, unfortunately, when it's used with answered prayers, it doesn't give you a charge back, but you can see I can cast one, yeah, two, uh, so a circle of healing and two prayer of healings will give you a, a stack of um, sanctify back. So um, the way that you want to focus on this in raid is you want to use those procs um, to just go crazy on spamming your CDR. It doesn't matter if there's any healing to do or not. You're focused on getting as many of those cooldowns back, whether that's a, you know, a, a sanctify or you're getting you're spamming flash shields to get back a serenity. You're trying to do that as much as possible because that all feeds back into your salve. So your salve is reduced by casting those holy words. And so the more that you can churn out, the faster you'll get that back and you'll ensure that you have it uh, up in time for you know your second or your third cast. So uh, those answered prayer procs are extremely important to be used effectively. Anytime you have it up, uh, you wanna use it. I do have, I'll, I'll go over this in my weak aura section, but I do have a weak aura that tracks it and it makes a sound effect when it comes up uh, or it's about to come up when you have 45 uh, stacks. So you can see it right here. When I get to 45 stacks of the buff, it'll make a chant sound. And then when it fully fills up, it'll start draining. And uh, you know that you need to start spamming like crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the damage rotation. So damage is important um, in a raid scenario. Uh, it's more than you might think, especially during progression rating. And honestly, as Holy Priest, it is not hard to parse on damage because a lot of holy priests do not use their stuff at all um you could throw one smite and probably green parse it's an exaggeration but um the big things that you want to focus on for damage uh as a holy priest you want to make sure that your divine star if you can also cleaves through enemies um and then you want to make sure that you're always keeping holy fire on cooldown and you want to make sure that you always have Shadow Word Pain on the target. If you just have those three things, you're gonna you're gonna do pretty well. So Holy Fire on cooldown, make sure you maintain Shadow Word Pain. If you're running Epiphany, um, then you wanna use your Chastise on cooldown uh, and realize that your Holy Fire is going to contribute to the cooldown reduction on that because of uh, Harmonious Apparatus. Um, and then beyond that, if you have, you know, if you've done all those things, then you can start smite spamming. Smite costs no mana at all, and so you're not going to drain yourself. It's a nice way to fill the um, time. Also, it does contribute uh, to chastise cooldown reduction, which, you know, s summons your divine image. It also, um, yeah, it summons your divine image. Um, and then uh, there's one more thing I was going to say. It'll come to me. Um, but yeah, chastise on cooldown, smite um, when you have nothing else to do. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Um, and if nothing else, if you don't care about doing damage in the raid and stuff like that, maybe this will be a little of incentive to, for you. Twist of Fate makes it so that when you heal or damage something below 35% health, you gain 10% increased damage and healing for eight seconds. So you can actually use this 
damage to increase your healing throughput. Say, for example, um, Sarkrath Phase 2. If you throw a simple, like, Shadow Word Pain on one of the adds, um, it's they, they die quick. So, um, those tiny adds. Uh, and so, chances are it's not even going to expire by the time it uh, dies, uh, but by the time it hits that uh, health threshold, and you'll get that 10% um, uh, healing amp, which is awesome. So, you can see right here, Twist of Fate increases your healing and damage by 10%. So maybe uh, it'll be incentive for you to uh, do a little bit more damage if you realize that it's also a healing increase. Um, that's it for damage, really. Um, Holy Nova, um, you know, if you can be in melee range and make it hit the boss as well, that's fine. On Ho Holy, honestly, I'm just using uh, your Rhapsody procs mostly to heal the range or wherever I'm standing. I'm, I'm focusing on it mostly for healing. It's not like disc where it's a, a part of your ramp rotation. Um, but if you can use it for damage as well, that's good. Defensives and survivability. Again, I went over this in my Mythic Plus video, um, but Priest is pretty squishy, but not as much as you might think. So Priest has a couple tools working for it. Um, your Fade, because of this uh, talent right here, Translucent Image, makes it so that it's a 10% damage reduction. And you might think, whoop to do 10%, so not a whole lot. But when you figure that Fade is on a 20 to 30 second cooldown, that's, that's a very high uptime. So you can throw this out just about any time you think about it, and you'll get pretty good value. So um, you want to get as many uses on this as possible. It doesn't cost any mana, so you may as well throw it out. Get that damage reduction anytime you're taking damage. If you're running this talent here, it will reduce it by 10 seconds. So that's what brings it down to the 20 seconds as opposed to 30 seconds. Um, also, again, you do have protective light with this talent setup. So if you flash yourself, heal yourself, or if you have binding heals and you flash heal somebody else, you'll have another 10% damage reduction. So now we're up to 20%. That's on a very short cooldown. Um, this one, honestly, you can maintain 100% of the time. Chances are you won't, but um, it, you could. Um, and then your big defensive, uh, big, is Desperate Prayer. So Desperate Prayer is uh it's not even a damage reduction it just increases your max health by 40 percent and heals you for that much as well so um honestly this is strongest when you consider it for avoiding like one shots and stuff like that so uh say for example i keep going back to rashok but uh during our progression on rashok right at the very end um you know those last that last charge uh, slam or two where he does the leap um, we were having trouble with people getting 100 zeroed. So um, this buffs your health up to like tank levels. So you can see when I use Desperate Prayer here, I'm up to 800k health. Um, and uh, I also have a macro that uh, uses Powered Shield on myself as well. Um, so, you know, your effective health is, is quite high. So. I'll go over that in my macro section, but I do I I do have Desperate Prayer also combined with Fade and with a uh, Powered Shield, so um, it's it stacks a lot of effects on myself at once to really help me avoid um, dying. And then again, going back to Leech, Leech is a very strong survival tool. Remember that all of the healing that you're doing is providing um, that Leech healing back to you, so. Um, you can see it, it, it is a very high uh, portion of your healing and survivability as well. So don't sleep on Leech. It's awesome. Uh, I do want to go over Guardian Spirit now. Guardian Spirit, uh, sometimes you'll have that assigned in a raid setting. Like, for example, during our Sarkrath prog, we'd uh, throw it on like the bomb runners or something like that. Or uh, sometimes you can use it in cheesy ways like to help um, somebody survive a, a solo soak or something like that. Um, I, I don't remember exactly how much it is, but I think it's like it, uh, it's only three times their max health or something. So if it's a really big hit, it won't save them. But for example, like the meteors in phase three of Sarkareth, if we combine us, uh, guardian spirit with like, you know, a, uh, a sack or something like that, a lot of times that was enough to save them. So they could solo soak it. So it's a strong uh, cooldown when used that way, but really, honestly, most fights I'm using it on some, I'm just kind of using it on cooldown. There's a damage moment, 
there's a squishy hunter or something like that I'm worried about, just throw it on him. Uh, if I'm if I need to stand and be greedy and channel a divine hymn or something like that, I could throw it on myself and uh, stand through some swirlies or something like that. Um, just as kind of an extra bit of insurance if I don't have uh, an augmentation evoker to rely on. Um, things like that. Those are some uses for Guardian Spirit. Um, power Infusion. So Power Infusion is a very strong part of your kit. It's a reason that you're taken, but it's also kind of a point of annoyance for uh, many priests. Um, you know, it ha you feel like, you know, the girl that everybody's bickering over and you're like, boys, boys. Um, it's, it can be a little annoying, um, especially when you have a fluctuate, you're on farm or something and you have a fluctuating roster and you gotta keep asking, who am I PIing this fight? And, you know, they forgot to set their macro that whispers you and, you know, you, you're using a focus macro and anyways, here's the way that I've, uh, uh approached power infusion and, uh, what's really worked well for me. So I have a weak aura called dibs on power infusion and i love this it's good for mythic plus two it's it's awesome so this has two different functions the first function is if you have your focus set on somebody then it will notify you when that person uses some kind of big damage cooldown like say you have it on a fire mage it will tell you when they combust um so that's strong and that's something that you can use to track an individual person in mythic plus it'll tell you when everybody uses their big cooldown but in raid that would be crazy so instead it's just limited to whoever you have your focus set on the second function of this is if you get whispered um certain phrases like uh i think i don't know where to check this but one of mine is like pi me if if if, if the if my person whispers me pi me yeah right there uh, just like that, then what it'll do is it'll pop up this icon, it'll say empowered, um, and uh, it'll also highlight their name yellow, um, and so it notifies me that I need to PI them. So I actually don't set focus on my PI target um, sometimes, depending on what class they are. Uh, so the past couple raid nights I've been PIing are Unholy DK, and then Holy DK requests it at an odd time. So if I have them set for as my focus, it'll tell me to PI them much sooner than they actually want it, because uh, it'll tell it'll tell it when they pop their army, I think. Um, but they actually want it a little bit later. So I don't set focus, and I just manually cast it on them, and I make sure that he has his whisper macro set up. Um, I think Demo Lock is like another good example of that. Um, they typically want it. I, I, it might trigger like with their tyrant, but they actually want it, um, or might, whatever. So, it, you know, if, if it's a class that has it a little off, um, then it might be worth not setting focus. Um, this is a good, uh, segue into my weak aura and macro section here of the video. Um, so, uh, as far as weak auras go, all of this is linked in the description, by the way. I have a spreadsheet that has all of my um, keybinds. It has all of my weak auras that I use. It's got all of my mouse over macros and just about everything I can, I can think of that might be helpful for you. So um, if you check the description, you can find a spreadsheet there. Um, but uh, some weak auras that I use that I just want to highlight real quick. Dibs on power infusion is a big one. Uh, buff powered shield just kind of shows when there's somebody in the raid that doesn't have the buff. So um, I find that helpful because a lot of times I forget. Um, answered prayers. This is really, really important uh, for making sure that you get good value out of your answered prayers procs. Um, so I, I wouldn't go into a raid without this. This is very, very important uh, for me. Divine image tracker. This isn't necessary, but I really like it. I like to know if I have my divine image still up. So after I use a holy word, if I'm healing and stuff like that, and I'm like, okay, is he actually still up? Because I've moved or something, I don't see him on the ground. Um, I can see this and it also shows how many stacks he has. If I've used multiple holy words in a short period of time, um, then it will show me how strong its uh, heals are going to be. Because again, it's increased for every stack um, based on the amount of holy words that you used during that time frame. Um, some other ones, Rhapsody Stack Tracker. I like this one a lot. It's a very simple week or it just shows you how many stacks of uh, your Rhapsody buff that you have. And uh, when you use it, it goes away. So I think it starts showing at like 15. Um, 
This one's a custom one that a friend made for me. It just shows spatial paradox when it's on me, so I know that I can actually move without canceling my uh, divine hymn. Uh, trying to think if there's any others. Um, there is one here in my priest set, the uh, Power Word Life. So this one is more for Mythic Plus, but if you are choosing to run Power Word Life and Raid, it will highlight when somebody is below that health threshold, that 35% th health threshold. It'll make a chomping sound, and that way you know that you can go ahead and cast uh, Power Word Life on them and get the effect. Uh, I believe that's it for um, what I want to show for weak ores. Let's look at macros real quick. So I have, oh shoot, it's Raid time. <laughs> I lost track of time. Um, I got this invite. Uh, anyways, so in my macros, I've made a macro, a mouse over macro for all of my abilities um, that I don't use for click casting. Um, some of them I do have doubled up. Like for example, my shadow word pain and my renew are actually on the same keybind. So if I'm not mousing over an ally, then it'll go ahead and cast shadow word pain on my enemy target. Um, uh, a lot of I, I have my holy words set as a mouse over this specific wording for mouse over macro is very nice because it makes it so that you can actually cast it if it's not if you're not mousing over so say for example i'm just running i don't have my mouse over anybody if i push five which is my keybind for serenity it'll still cast it and it'll cast it on myself um if you have a traditional mouse over without this help um section it won't cast you have to move your mouse physically down and cat and make oh shoot oops uh you have to make sure that you actually have um the mouse over on somebody so um i really like that and then my pi macro uh this is the one that i use it's included in that spreadsheet um but this makes it so that if i have a focus target it will prioritize casting on them if I don't, then it will prioritize casting it on a mouse over. And unfortunately, this only, uh, I haven't figured out a way to make it so that it has a help component as well. So my power infusion only casts if I'm mousing over somebody. So you can see right here, I'm not, I, I have no target. I can't, I can't cast power infusion. And honestly, as a healer, that's fine because uh, I I don't typically just use it for myself. I want to make sure it goes on the person that I'm supposed to be casting it on. Um, so that's what I use for my power infusion. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. We went a little long, but I, I, I feel like we covered a lot of the things that we needed to. So, um, I am a teacher at heart. I, I, I'm a teacher in real life. And so, uh, helping people and, uh, helping them grow is my passion. So if you have any questions or anything I forgot to cover in the video or anything like that, anything I can help you out with, please reach out in the comments and I check it. Uh, very, very frequently, and I will get back to you in a very timely fashion and uh, help you out in any way I can. Uh, if you're interested in more healing content, please consider pushing the like and subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Uh, I produce healing content regularly, especially for priest, uh, both holy and uh, discipline. And uh, if you'd like to catch me live, I do stream on twitch.tv um, slash Ragnon Gaming. And I stream our raids on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Mountain Time. And then on off nights, I also do some uh, occasional Mythic Plus streams. And I stream other games like Phasmophobia and Seven Days to Die and stuff just for fun. So uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Good luck in raiding. Bye.